Nearly 14,000 covered bridges once helped American travelers traverse rough terrain across the country. Today, less than 900 survive. We'll be exploring the history of one of these bridges, which was one of the longest in the world. Along the way, we'll learn why bridges are covered, why they're made of wood, and a couple common building techniques. To learn more, we'll need to travel north up the New Hampshire-Vermont border on the Connecticut River. This is the Cornish Windsor Cover Bridge. Built in 1886 for a cost of $9,000, this bridge connects the towns of Cornish, New Hampshire to Windsor, Vermont. In the previous 90 years to the construction of this bridge, three other bridges sat at this site, each falling victim to either floods or ice flows. In the year 1936, the states of Vermont and New Hampshire purchased the bridge for a combined total cost of $22,000, and in 1943, the bridge became free to cross. In the late 1980s, the bridge was closed for repair and the communities of Windsor and Cornish were in danger of losing their covered bridge for good. The New Hampshire Department of Transportation proposed to install a new concrete bridge at this location, but the communities of Windsor and Cornish rallied around the historic structure, which at that time was standing for more than 100 years. With the tireless help of local state representative Merrill Shotanis, $1.4 million was allocated to the restoration of the covered bridge under House Bill 83A, which overwhelmingly passed 350 to 1 on February 19, 1987. Shotanis spoke in support of the bill, stating that it is a historic treasure in the state of New Hampshire, and it is literally the child of this legislator. On a cold winter day in December of 1989, a ceremony was held to reopen the covered bridge. Today, the covered bridge stands at just over 450 feet, truss to truss. It was surpassed as the longest covered bridge in the United States in 2008 by the Small Gulf Covered Bridge. So why were these covered bridges built with wood? It just so happens that wood was quite the abundant resource in 19th century America. And a great thing about building with wood is that it shows signs of wear before the structure critically fails. So why were bridges covered then? Many people think the reason that bridges were covered is so that horses wouldn't get spooked as they crossed looking at the water below. However, the actual reason is much simpler. Bridges were covered so they weren't exposed to the elements. Bridges that were exposed to the elements would deteriorate much faster and would be completely gone after 20 years or so. Whereas covered bridges built back then are still standing almost 200 years after they were built. The Cornish Windsor Covered Bridge was built using the town lattice method, patented by Ithel Town in 1820. Town would sell his design for $1 per foot. If he or one of his agents found a bootleg design, he would charge $2 per foot. The town lattice design was an innovation in covered bridge building. The design was built using short, light planks of wood instead of utilizing full timbers. These intersecting planks of wood lattices are held together by wooden pegs called trunnels. This design was very simple to build and did not require skilled labor like other intricate designs of the time. Town said it was designed to be the most simple, permanent, and economical, both in erecting and repairing. Covered bridges are unfortunately starting to disappear from the map. As time goes on and these bridges fall into disrepair or fall victim to arson, it's a lot easier for states and local municipalities to replace them with modern bridges. But it's ultimately up to us to keep their stories going for another century. For more information on covered bridges, 
and a map of covered bridges in your area. You can visit coveredbridgessociety.org. For more information on covered bridges, you could read the most recent edition of the World Guide to Covered Bridges. The script for this video with annotated sources is available in the description below. I'm Thomas Kerrigan, the New England Cameraman. Thanks for watching.